So guys, now I'm gonna show you how my quest system for the narrative game works. Let's start with the new game. As you can see, I have the introduction quest. It consists of four elements. You need to head over the table, need to lead the fireplace and collect some elements. Let's reach to our table. As you saw, we've done this step. The checkpoint is reached and you saw that the progress was saved. Now if we go back to our start screen and continue, as you can see, the step is saved and we are on the same quest progression. So maybe let's go and work with our fireplace. Next, I guess we should take some bottles and the cigarette pack. So this quest is done and now we have another one and it says replenish stamina. So I choose my water bottle and drink it. The water is gone and we have another quest here. Also this element is the end point. Right now I have one quest left in this level and when I do interact with this object nothing happens. At this point you should actually add your logic so that you will receive the proper visual feedback on whether, for instance, complete your quest and blah 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 before you continue to next chapter. So I grab my box, it says release it, I release it. Now quest is done. Here you can also go with some fancy logic, but as it's narrative type of game I'm making all. I guess player should actually work with <laughs> the head. So go in here and now if we interact with the endpoint you can see we are on the next level and we have another quest. So if you go back and continue you'll see that we have the quest progression saved and we are on the new level. So it says throw away any crate. We pick it and then release it. So it works fine. Also if you go back to our start screen and make the new game, you will see that the whole game will start from the beginning. So let's see how to create such system. Hello guys, today I'm gonna tell you how to create a quest system for narrative adventure game. It's a very interesting approach. I find myself quite hard to achieve this goal to finish the feature, but I'm pretty <coughs> um I like the result that I have. Right now, from the picture that you can see, uh, I'll tell you about the workflow, how it actually works in my case, and I can. And I think most very amount of games can be made with this approach. It's very expandable, very easy to implement. In case you follow my instructions, of course. So, as you can see, everything is based on our player and it has the quest component inside. This component actually tracks the whole progress of our quest. As you can see, we have two different levels. The first one, the second one. Each level as its own quest data. It's a data table that consists of several quests. Each quest can be or actually can have many quest steps. So 
as I said, we are doing this for the narrative game, and basically having different data tables for each level or chapter you have in game is it comes in handy. So each subquest can have many uh, quest steps. So in one chapter or in one level, you can make very big quests. <clears throat> also, as you can see, I've divided. Actually, all quests can be divided basically in three forms of communicating with the world. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. So, you can iterate through the quest, and this is for all kind of gathering, collecting, withdrawing items. For instance, if you want to kill 10 enemies or gather 100 herbs or spend 20 gold and so on and so forth. It's all about iterating through actually integer up next interact quest. It's all about activating, deactivating, interacting with an object. So basically if you want to look through the binicular or maybe to lead on the fireplace or just to switch on TV and so on it's all about interacting and reach quest basically go from A point to B point and the mixture of these three types of quests are actually the basis of the quest system so for instance, here you can see that we need to reach some point. Next, we need to iterate through some kind of iteration quest. For example, let's collect water consumables. Also, let's maybe turn on the refrigerator to store our water consumable. After this, three quests, each with each, each with its own unique sub-steps are done, we can proceed to next level and next level basically loads its own quest data. So by this approach you can manipulate the data tables and have very various game what can I say more just let me think oh also I'd like to say that this system doesn't need to have any quest items for instance it's basically quest component who listen to dispatcher for each interactive element and if I interact with some kind of object it basically sends the message telling what type of action was made and um, what class of interactable object it is and quest component then decides what to do with this item. If it is in our active quest, he will apply the proper instructions due to type of this, que this quest step. Also, it's not the MMO kind of quest system. Basically, we can have only one active quest at the moment. But maybe if I find some powers myself, I can make another quest system 
so for the multiplayer type of games well I hope you understand the idea and from what you've seen a few minutes ago on the demo I hope you will like and I guess we should start and one moment I forgot to tell you in case to achieve the result that you will see right now I recommend you to actually look through some of my tutorials so you understand how it works and without it it will be a little bit difficult to understand some points so what episode I'm talking about it's actually the interactive system consumable system then save system of course this episode I'll tell you how to actually save and restore the quest progress so it won't be lost next um, typewriter feature in case you want to achieve the same UI that I have next just let me think one more minute interactive was consumable was say system was um, typewriter feature was so I guess I guess I guess I guess that's all what you need now let's start with the structures so here I have the structure as you can see it consists of another structure and these steps are actually the array of different type of quest steps that we need to have so first of all let's go to quest children folder and here you can see we have quest interact structure quest iterate structure quest reach structure each structure type is for the particular type of actions that can be made through our quest so For instance, quest interact structure consists of description of the object interactable base because if you have the interaction system work with the quest system, it's like very consistent feature. You won't need to make a lot of different mechanics uh, also objects with their logic so if for instance we, we want to make something different or just to change some values some attributes we need to implement the dispatcher call in the base class of our interactable or consumable or other class that inherit from the interactable class and create just a child so next the boolean type complete for the step and type of action that is applied to our quest I guess item it's quest type enumeration just let me show you here quest type 
iterate, reach, interact also. Each type of action, three basic steps, iterate, reach, interact, can have some kind of child sub-actions. For instance, interact can be expand to grab and release in case we need to speak something and to release something. As for the iterate, it can be consume, I guess. Not for the iterate, but for the interact. For instance, if we use iterate by collecting water consumables, and then we use interact and consume, or basically consume through our interact, to actually drink water. And if it's consumable, consume will actually go for consuming water, food, and some other stuff that we can consume. So, I guess, or I hope you understand what the idea is behind this approach. So, back to quest interact structure. By default, the type is interact for the structure. So, in some cases, we don't need to make it Uh, or just adjust it when we create some more struct some more structures default values can be used and they come in handy quest iterate has the same layout but we also we also have the current amount and max amount the current amount is for storing in our save system and restoring the progress. For instance, if we need to collect five uh, snacks and we just collected three of them, we need to save the progress and then when we load our game, we need to restore it. So current amount is for the amount we have in the moment and max amount for the maximum that we need in our quest. And quest reach. Here you can see that we have different type of class object, it's checkpoint class, but if you saw my tutorials, checkpoint is just the child that inherits from the interactive base class and it has its own unique logic. So to save the progress you just need to Actually, actually, the checkpoint it's, it has three type of actions that can be applied to it. Checkpoint is for reaching something. It has the overlap abilities. Also, it has the direction save. And in case we actually have all our quests done, it will check whether we can proceed to the next level and if checkpoint class has the type of endpoint when we interact with it we can actually go to another level and it will transfer us so please watch the tutorial about the save system Also, you can see basic elements are set. In case of iterating with some object, we don't need to have the default class because it's not necessary. The logic I'll show you later, we'll actually answer the questions why you don't need have the object here by default. <coughs> Sorry guys. So, basically these three types of structures 
uh, collect it into another structure. It is called quest steps. Here you can see which quest, iterate quest, interact quest. And they are for array. So in case our quest need to have only one element or two elements and each element can have different amounts of quest steps, you need to make the master structure for it and go with the array element layout. So when we work with our data table or database of the quest, we can just add any kind, any amount of steps of particular type we need. So the master for quest is the quest steps structure, this one, that consists of our steps and the description that is for visual feedback and for the name of the quest we are actually has have active at the moment. And there is another one, it's called quest progression. We need it to store and restore our progress. So it have it has completed steps, the number of steps we actually achieved through our game. And actually we don't need to know which particular step we have made. It's all behind the logic. We just need to store the number of steps we have completed. I'll show it later. Also current quest index. So when we restore our progress, we look through the database or the table and retrieve the information based on our index. Current quest data is the structure of the master structure quest. This one. So when we restore our quest with the index, we can actually have the proper name and steps which were made some time ago. And the boolean for allowing us to continue to next chapter, to next episode, to next level, wherever. Now, with this done, we can actually go to our logic. So, let's continue. So, let me just show you the data table this one and this one as you can see and you from what you heard some minutes ago actually that's how it looks in case we are making requests for each level each row is particular quest Description is for the name of the quest that will appear on your heart. Introduction, in my case, and some of us, pickables. Here, for the introduction, I've gone with all type of interactions. Which, so if we expand it, here you can see that I have the description for my step. Checkpoint is basically when we overlap with our object, it will fire the event to our quest component and type of action that actually 
was made, the reach. If you talk about iterating through something, here I have the quest of two sub steps collect water, collect cigarettes. Not the quest, but, but steps inside our first quest. Here, as you can see, type is set to iterate, so you need to collect two water bottles. Object is water got summable. It's the child which inherits from consumable base class. Also, the same but for cigarettes. And the most beautiful part is this is that all the objects that you have in your game can actually have their own unique logic and be a part of the quest system. So you don't need the different type of objects to be the quest elements. Here, here you can see that I need to collect only one pack of cigarettes. As for the interacting, here you can see that I need to interact with the fireplace, also the child which inherits from interactable base class. When I am done with this quest, the quest component will look for the second or for the upcoming quest in our database. There will be consumables. And here you can see I have only one step. So I don't need to reach anything or interact with something. I just need to iterate through, for instance, water consumable. The type of action is set to consume, so I just need to drink one water bottle, one bottle of water. When it's done, here comes another quest of pickables. And here I need to interact with two objects, or actually with one object but with different type of actions grab the grab crate and release it well i forgot to tell you about the one more tutorial for instance if you want to pick something or draw something you need to watch tutorial about the pickable item Actually, it's also the child of the interactable base class. So, have some Uber classes, Uber master classes, it's pretty handy. And another data table is for another level. For instance, if I make the progress through all these quests, Quest system will receive the information that I can proceed to next level, and when the next level is loaded, it will start with this quest. The main trick here that we can decide through the player start class, it's the spawn ability. It's not the basic player start class that is instance on our level. Actually, it's this arrow. It's just the pointer of the class I have here, class start. Here you can see that I have the quest that is able for my particular level. So here I can actually I can actually change what type of quests I need in this particular level. 
Well, it's pretty much expandable, that I said earlier. And, for instance, if you go to another map, another level, if I select my player start class, here you can see that I have another quest that is able. The one for my particular level. Also, one more disable is it's for the rich text, so the user interface on our heart, the name and layouts of the steps, or actually the whole quest system, will be wrapped with some fancy stuff, so it can have different type of fonts, colors, opacity of our steps, uh, size of fonts, and so on. Here I have three elements. Main is for the header of our quest. Step is for the step quest or quest step. The size here is a little bit smaller. And in case we need to iterate through something, if you have if you need to have some kind of if we need to actually give the visual feedback that we are counting or iterating through something, it's amount. Actually the same layout. <coughs> I'm sorry but also with the different size. I'll show you later how to actually activate or make this table work with our user interface. And also back to data tables. In case you need to add one more quest, you just press add and make changes here. If you need to have as I said, more steps for iterating, for interacting, you just need to actually add elements and just name it, make some adjustments and it will work. Now, when we're done with this part, let's go to Blueprint Interface. It's interface for our quest system. So here I have some basic functions. Start quest, complete quest, create quest widget, destroy quest widget, get quest widget, and the reference here if is for the situation when we need to load our game and check whether our HUD is actually created so we can change visual feedback. So when our HUD won't, be, it actually can be created. Um, it's, it can be not ready when we start our game, so we need to check whether our HUD is created so we can prevent ourselves of having a lot of problems and errors in case actually as I said HUD isn't created in the proper time. So here I have HUD quest is the reference for this widget. So to have the layout that I have you need to create two kind of widget. It's the master widget that actually is the vertical box here which will be the master grid for the quest steps. So each quest step is just the child for our master widget. So it's dynamically um, 
I actually forgot the world in English. But I guess you understand what I'm trying to say. It's dyna dynamically built. Let's go with this explanation. So each, each step will be the different digit here. Next, update quest. And here, actually this function will be triggered or fired every time we are interacting with our interactable base class or with our quest item. Let's, let's say that like this. Here we need to have two inputs. We need to tell what type of action we made with our quest item. So for this we need to set the quest type enumeration. Let me actually show you earlier this one and the reference to our object it's the interactable base class also we don't want to have any begin play event in our quest component because it need to be triggered only at a particular time so for this I have set quest data table and here the reference for our quest data table it's just data table not the particular one which we have created here um, this or this we will actually tell the quest system what kind of table we are using for each particular level. So, with this setup of quest system interface done, we can proceed to next blueprint. Let's say we gonna go with a player chart. We need to actually fire some events to our quest system. So here you can see in widget management, it's the event that is called on event begin play. Here I have create hut and this actually the action that creates all of my widgets. So on the event begin play in our <coughs> player character, I need to send the message through my quest system interface to player controller because player controller actually is for creating and storing my HUD. So for those who watch my tutorial series, this is not the same kind of news. You actually know what I'm talking about. So, play character. On event begin play, fires event to create quest widget. And when our player is actually dead, or we don't need to show our heart, we fire element, fire element, we fire uh, event that actually sends the message also through the interface to our player controller to destroy our widget. Also, we need to add the quest component here inside our player character. So, it will always be with us and we can communicate with it. So, at this point, we need to create quest component. It's the simple scene component. 
so just create one next go to class settings and the interfaces we just need to add our quest system interface it's the basic implementation so we can listen to the events that will be sent from different places and quest component will hear them and proceed with the proper logic so when we done with creating quest component and setting the interface it's right just for this moment we need to add it here under our scene or root component in our player character next go back to event graph also in the begin play flow we need to have these two events set quest data base and start quest the events we have created in our interface Also, you can notice that for the set question as a base, we need to provide the quest data table. For this, I have the one that I created. It's for this point is empty, and you can see the variable type is data table, instance is editable, and it's set to be exposed and spawn. So, when we go back to the player start class, this one, we can notice that when we spawn our player character here, or according to the proper situation when we need to load something, or to debug something, or to use on the editor, it has the quest at the table reference input or pin visible so we can actually feed it with our particular data table so create this variable provided to set quest data base event make sure it's set to be editable and exposed and spawn right after we have made this we just need to trigger start quest so when our charity is spawned quest component will fire and the quest will start Also, as for the save system, we need to go inside get play data function Well, this is just for a little bit later actions We don't have this function implemented at the moment, so I just need to go go back here in some minutes so for this for play character we are done for the moment I guess for play start just one more thing I need to tell you is also to create quest data table here and just made instant editable and when you do this when you select your player start or how it's called in your game class for spawning the character you can actually select the proper data table for your level 
So, do this and provide it as a reference to all spawn actor nodes in all places that you need. So, let's continue. Let's open play controller. Here we need to add these two types of events. Create quest widget and destroy quest widget. The logic is simple. Create hard widget, store it as the reference, add it to the viewport. In case we don't need it, we check whether it's valid, then we remove it from our parent and we set it as null, so the garbage collector can actually destroy it. So here it's simple and we can actually close our player controller. Now for the quest component. So quest component. Let's begin with the variables. Game data is the structure for our game data as you can see. So in case you haven't seen the save system tutorial, please watch it. Next, quest database, it's the data table here. That's the reference, the local reference, so we can actually manipulate with it here to prevent some spaghetti stuff. Next, quest names, it's the name and the type of the variable is the array. It's for iterating through the data table, raw names and the next element quest data list is the structure of our quest also array so when we are done with iterating with our names we can actually get the raw from our data table and we have the list of all our quests we have in our data table next current quest data it's the same type of the previous variable but only single variable current quest index integer so when we load our game we will retrieve our index and by using this we will actually load the proper progress and when we continue with our progression we will iterate properly. Next, validate quest widget timer. It's timer handle. So it's for this kind of operation here. We check whether we have our quest widget. So if it's valid, we can actually continue with our logic. And at this point, we need to go back to our player controller because I forgot about this function. If we open our interface, it's get quest data, get quest widget. That's this type of action you saw earlier. And we need to implement it in our player controller. So, go back to player controller. And, as you saw from the interface, it's, it was the return. Actually, it was the function that has some return value. So, it will be marked another way. Not like this yellow function, but like this, the blue one. And here, in player controller, we just need to provide our hard quest 
digit as the return value. So when we fire this event from our quest component, the controller will return this quest widget. Next, initial steps amount. It's the basic steps amount that we will use as the counter. So we will actually compare how, ste how much steps we have complete and how much steps we actually need to have. So this will be the trigger for allowing us to continue to next level. So next, complete steps amount, also integer, and the boolean, go next chapter. Now, let's, I guess, start with some simple stuff. Get current quest. It's the function with the return value of quest progression. So creates another function and output use quest progression structure, the one we created earlier. And here we need to provide other variables, use them to make new structure, make quest progression and Proceed with the return value for our function. And at this point, when we have this function implemented, we need this for our save system. We can go back to player character to get player data. And here you can see we have get current quest call but it's not the one you actually used to see everywhere. It's because it's the pure function, so it, don't, it doesn't have any exact pins. To do this, you just need to select return nodes of their function and check your here. So, when you do this, you don't need any exact pins, you just need to provide the target for your function and it will fire properly. And we, who saw the save system tutorial, will know this function is used on our checkpoint. So, when we need to save our progress, we need to retrieve the data from our player. And here we have the player data and let's go back to our content browser. I guess it's actually it's very hard to make tutorials on such complex stuff, but please forgive me my mistakes. And my stops. So let's open actually the game data children. Here we have two types of structures and we store the quest progression inside the play data. So right behind or right after Right, yeah, right after the selected one, we need to add the quest progression structure variable into our play data structure. So when we need to save our progress, we just need in play character to provide our quest progression from our quest component. So when we do this one, here we can open get player data function and just call our get current quest and provide it with the proper element. 
so it will be stored and that's all actually save system will load it just like just very simply okay very simply you don't need to make some extra actions if you have save system implemented and when it's done here we can actually close our player character finally next Quest component. Back to quest component. You need to implement some basic events. So here, as we have the quest system interface implemented, we just search for the proper actions. Set quest data table as it has the input quest that's a that's a table it's a base whether you like it to call we need to store it as our local reference then we use it to iterate through with all the we actually use it to retrieve all the quest names we use them to iterate through our data table and the out row is actually quest type structure we use it to make the list of all the quests we have in our data table then we use load game data it's the event we call through the interface with the help of our game instance and it will actually return us the game data the structure here and we store it to our local reference so we can use this stuff to prevent from having lots of spaghetti code from our game data we need to break it select player break player data and use progression actually the operation we did the operation i explained you a few minutes ago a few minutes means late uh not late and go earlier well and from this progression we break it also and we need to set up our basic variables complete steps current quest index current quest data and ability to go to new chapter so if you have some dates are stored it will be retrieved here and we can use it to continue from the point we end on the our last game next the tricky part we need to check whether we <sighs> whether we are on the same level at the moment if it's so for instance, if we just started our game, player, if the game actually starts, player character is spawned, player start will actually by default save our state on our spawn. So the current level and the level from our data table will actually be the same. If it's so, you need to check whether description in our disable doesn't equal or equals to nothing. If it doesn't equal nothing, it means we have some data, we can continue with our actions. If it's not, we need to... Oh, actually, if it's... Yeah, if it's null or nothing, we need to set current quest index to zero. So, by using this, we can actually continue with iterating through our progression, through our quests, use it as the default value to 
get the element, the first element in our quest array. So the first quest will be started. It will be our current quest data, the proper one. And whether it's false, whether our levels aren't equal, it means that we are newly spawned and we need to it's for the situation when we actually end with our first chapter and continue to our next chapter. So if it's false, the levels are different. It means that we also need to start the game from the first quest. And as you know, each level have has its own quest data tables. So, by starting the new level, we actually have the proper behavior when we start the game with the new quest. Next, when it's done, here you can see we have dispatches. Actually, three of them. The one is called Quest Item Iterated, next Checkpoint Reached and Quest Item Interacted. The core elements of our quest system. You need to create the event dispatcher. Then you need to use Copy Signature From and select the function from which you will actually restore or retrieve the information. For instance, if we interact with some object, it will fire back to our quest component and it will provide this type of data we need to continue to work with. So, we need to create byte event on and use here I have create event on update quest. As you remember, we created this function inside our interface and it has type and object variables as the income inputs. So, here just call bind event for instance, on quest item reached, you can create, you can actually just pull a wire from here and make it right here or here or here, but it's very complex, some spaghetti stuff you don't need. Just use create event and when you use create event node here, just provide it like this, then select date quest and it will work fine. In case you don't know how to actually receive this type of data, let me show you. Just create dispatcher here, then from copy signature from, use our update quest event and that's all that's how you will receive this layout of dispatches so we need three dispatches when we inter iterate for the reach and for interact type of, of, of actions now let's continue event validate quest widget. We check whether we have our HUD created. If it's valid, we actually need to validate our timer because we check it every 0.2 seconds. And when it's done, we can actually fire start quest function through our 
hard element. It's actually this type of event. And let's actually I'll explain you the idea. Then we will change our intention to hard elements and then only then proceed with our quest component. So, I guess let's switch this point here to our hard quest. So, our hard, our hard quest widget. First of all, let's talk about layout. On our upper level, our widget here is said to be invisible. Next, canvas panel actually holds the border, which is for our background color. In case you want to have some background here, in my case I don't need it sometimes, so just the matter of taste. Anchor is this one, middle right. The layout here is up to you to decide how to go with it. Known in padding. The brush color to suit my mood. And it actually holds the vertical box. It's called main grid. Make sure that elements you change are set to be variable, like main text and step grid here for me. So basically, the vertical box for storing the header of our quest, this element, and for steps, for grid of steps, we will actually dynamically build. So, for the main grid, padding is set to zero, nothing interesting here. Next, the first element and the header of our quest is another border with its own color scheme. Padding also to zero, alignment you see on your own, and it has fill. 0 0.25 here to suit me well and main text it's actually the rich text block and for the text style I use it's a base quest text style the one I show you earlier and nothing here more for the steps grid Fill is set to 1, alignment you see on your own, and actually nothing interesting here too. So, with this done, let's go to graph and talk about the function that you need to implement here to continue our work. The first one is start quest. You can see that I have update step and complete step as the functions and this is just custom event that's the reason to have this custom micro for the typewriter feature when the header is actually it's, when it's actually appears letter by letter just for the visual feedback and I can't use custom macros inside the function. So that's the reason we have this event as custom event, but not as the function. So start quest as the input of quest data. That's the event we will fire from this point and this point. 
So if we go back to quest component, validate quest widget when everything is okay and our HUD is created. If I start quest, custom event and our HUD quest widget, this one. We store quest data as the local reference stored quest data, the same type, fquest. Then step grid, this block, we need to clear our children. Next, we set the visibility of our quest widget to be visible. We need to clear children every time we start new quest. So our steps won't be shown in a proper way. Next, I use rich loop with delay and break. Right here, I don't need break, but it's the only macro I implemented. I use delay 0.1 second for each letter. I need to be printed. Empty message is the buffer or temporal string variable, and I use append upcoming letters here and Every time it prints, every 0.1 second, it's filled itself with another letter. So, to receive your string as the array, here, on store quest data, I break its quest structure, use the description, and use get character array from string to receive it as the array. Next, when my buffer is increasing, I need to print the description of my quest. For this, I use set text on main text element, and I use append node with tags. So, the rich text feature is applied on my description. The open tag main and the close tag default. So, the layout I have in my data table will actually be applied on my text. When it's done, we need to iterate through each type of erase according to the proper quest step for reach, for iterate and interact. For this we just break our structure, use our steps. As you can see, I hid or I hide every unused element in my structure to actually have my blueprint clear. Then for each loop I use create hard quest steps widget, this one. And maybe let's go to my steps widget and talk about a little talk about a little about it. So you don't need to have any particular layout here, any alignment, because it's the children for our grid. I'm sorry guys, my cat is disturbing me. So, as it's child here, it will be automatically aligned and applied to be inside our box here. One moment, guys. So, back to quest steps. Simple canvas, horizontal box, size to content to fit properly. Position is set to particular values here, so I'll have some offsets from each widget on the bottom, 
I'm sorry, not on the bottom, on my top, on the left, dimensions. Well, status, just simple checkbox. Also have some spaces here to have the pretty layout. Step text is the description for my step. This element and mount text are actually the rich text block and they use the same quest system, quest text style. I think I just need to kill my cat. One moment. <laughs> so. Actually, I guess nothing fancy here. Layout is up to you to decide how to go along with it. You can see my. Also make sure that status, step text and amount text are set to be variable. By default, checkbox is set to be unchecked. And I guess by default, my element is hidden to yes. So, visibility set to hidden. Well, for this moment, we can go back to our art quest, I guess. Continue with it. So, when we iterate through our quest steps, we need to create our art. Next, here you can see quest steps has exposed some attributes. It's step description. Complete state, current amount and max amount for the elements that should be iteratable. So, for each type of steps, you need to provide the particular elements. And I have some tricky logic behind the iteration type of steps. As you can see, if we are talking about the rich type of quest or interact type of quest, I don't provide any current amount and max amount, just description and the type if they are complete. But for the iterating, I use all of them. The reason is pretty much simple. As you can see, We, when we are creating our hard elements, we fire the event, which is called init quest steps. It's the function that we have here. And here is the logic. If we have the quest completed, we need to set our checkbox to be checked. Then some fancy stuff to make the visual feedback so our progress is continuing. So for amount text and step text, I use set render opacity with lower value. So it will be a little bit transparent. Next, I use set text also. Make it with the proper text from quest text style, so it will be the properly it will have the proper look. Next, I check whether the max amount actually is bigger or higher than zero. If it's true, it means that we need to actually make our mount text, this element, visible. And set text to this element with this logic. 
So current amount slash max amount. So we can actually check our progression. If it's false, it means that our max amount is less or equals to zero. We just need to hit this element and we don't bother whether it's iterated or not, we don't actually see it. Go back to hard master. When we create hard quest steps widget, we need to store it with the step list. It's some sort of map with the string and hard quest steps, the reference as the values for our keys. Do this for all of our steps. Next, on the complete, I have draw with delay. It's also a custom event for the visual feedback, so our steps appear with a little delay, right, one after another. It's this event here. I use get all children on step grid and for each loop with the proper delay, I use set visibility for them to visible. That's all. That's how they appear. Now, let's talk about update step and complete step. Let's begin with complete step. It's Actually, when our quest, main quest with all our steps are completed, it will fire and it will hide our widget and actually clear the buffer for our description. So every time we have new quest, our description should be new. And as we have the typewriter operation applied to it, we need to clear our buffer and update step. So, when we interact with some object, and the interaction means that we interact with the object with only one single instance of it, we fire update step. So, that's the logic. And because we have added each step widget with the particular key when we use update step this will come from quest com component we find on the description whether we have created such step widget if it's so we just use another function in it it's called update quest steps this function here is for visual feedback on whether we have our steps completed or not. So back to hard quest steps. This function update quest steps it checks whether max value also higher than zero. So the tricky part is that we don't need to have some extra logic here. Just the simple one. If the maximum value of our created widget is higher than zero, it means that we are iterated with an object. And we use current amount, just increase it by one, make another update on our text element, this one. So it will actually update its value from this point here and here. Also make sure to have the proper tag for the style. And then we check whether our current amount equals or higher than our max amount. If it's so, we need to do what we have done in our init quest steps here. We make our checkbox set to checked and the opacity for our text elements 
be a little bit transparent. So it visualizes that we actually completed our steps. And if our max amount is actually less zero or equal zero by default, when we receive update step on operations such as reach or interact, it will basically go here and set it as checked, as completed, because it's one action done operation, something like this. So for this, we are done here with hard quest steps here, and we can continue with hard quest. So guys, actually, we I explained everything on the quest uh, hard widgets, and we can go back to our quest component to continue work with it. So back to where we stopped, validate quest widget. Now another actions. Event start quest, also from our interface. Here we need to set initial steps amount and we make it through calculating the length of each quest steps array. Each array has its own particular number of steps. By calculating the amount of them, we can know how many steps we need to make to complete the proper quest in our desert base. Each time we receive event start quest, this amount will be overwritten and we will have the proper step amount to compare with. Next, we also check whether our quest hard is created. If it's so, we just fire this the same event. If it's not, that's the part when we set timer and check whether we have our part valid. Each 0.2 second looping and as you can see as the delegate for the timer we use validate quest widget custom event here. And we store the timer handle as the local reference. Also, we need to create next quest custom event and here we need to make this such of logic. We use current quest index on the whole quest array list we use it to retrieve the proper quest, or actually the next quest, from through our data table to receive the proper structure and we set the return value as the current quest data. So when we complete with one quest, we can actually start with the new one from the list. And it also goes with the same kind of logic that we have in start quest event here. Next, event complete quest. When our quest is completed, we fire complete quest function on our quest hard widget, then we need to actually um, clear the buffer or the default variables, so when we start the new quest, the logic will work properly. So it won't accumulate on the previous values, it will work from the start with the default values we need. And when the quest is completed, we need to actually update current quest index. So if we have the first element completed, 
our next index should be 2 and this index will be filled here to trigger the new quest. Also here we check whether our current quest index is actually not higher than the last index of the quest data list. It means that our quest data table does not have more quests at all. Actually, it's the last quest we are actually working with. If it's true, we should set go to next chapter as true. So when we interact with the endpoint class in our layer, in our level, we can proceed and load the next level, the new chapter. And if it's not, it means that we have some quests uh, left. Here I use set timer by event, no looping, and with the small delay. And I, for delegate, I use next quest. So right after 0 0.2 seconds to find next quest. That's for actually to, it's up to you, you can actually just make the straight call of next quest like this. But for my case, I use the timer, so I have the custom delay between how time should I wait before one quest ends and another quest starts. Well, I guess the only element left in the quest component here is this one, when update quest. And we have another function. It's called compute quest steps. Here I use switch on type that I receive from the update. And, as I said earlier, we only have three basic types of how to interact with the quest items. It's the iteration, reach, and interacting. The sub ways how to interact. For instance, if we are iterating, consume goes this way. Or if we are interacting, grabbing and releasing goes also the way where interacting is. So grab and release are some sort of children of the interact type of action. So every action that you will need to add to have the specific logic can actually go through the logic here. For instance, if you need to kill something, we need to go kill with the same logic as we have in iterate, because killing someone is increasing the counter, and increasing the counter is means that we are iterating through some list. So let's continue. So we are iterating through each type of steps we have. Then we have some local variables. It's iteration amount, iteration index, reach index and interact index. On our iteration, we store due to proper step each particular index. Interact index, reach index, interaction index. Then we break. Let's go with the first one, iterate here. It's the complex one. So we break our structure and we check whether the object that we receive from our update quest went <coughs> equals the one we have in our database. 
We also check whether it's completed and if we have the proper type of the operation we are done over our quest item. If it's so, we can continue. Next, we use, because it's iterating and we have got the update, we need to increase the current amount by one. Set it to iteration amount here. Next, we need to feed the information inside our structure. The best way how to go with the data to don't have the overflow of the data and in case of performance, we don't need to rewrite the whole structure, we just need to set the proper value in the particular element. For this we use set member on our quest iterate structure. So what do we do? We get current quest data, this one we have, break it, use the steps, use the iterate, because we are in the iterate data here, and we don't use get a copy with the iteration index, we use get a reference. The reason is pretty simple get a copy, as it says from the, <coughs> I'm sorry, on the description, copy doesn't change the value, because it's just a copy. But when we use get a ref, it will actually operate directly on the proper structure. So we use get the ref and use set members in F quest iterate and select current amount here so we will store the element so when we retrieve it so when we reload our game we need to get the proper current amount inside not the previous one but the current one so when the update when we receive the update we increase our iteration amount and we change its value in our structure. Then we check whether <coughs> the iteration amount is our local variable here is higher or equals of our maximum amount we have. If it's so, we need to also, as we do, as we did it here, change the complete attributes in our quest iterate structure. So it means if our iteration amount is the same amount as we have here, max amount, it means the quest the quest step of the quest is completed. If it's so, we also do the same that we did here. We need to update current quest. I'm sorry, the same kind of operation, but there's a little difference. Here we update the current quest index, it's when the whole quest is completed, and here we updating the quest step amount. So when the quest step is done, we need to have less quest steps to be done. So for this we increase the counter for it. And whether our iteration amount is less than the maximum amount that means that we should just update step and go with our progression and, and keep going with our progression. Update step here need to update the visual feedback on our HUD. So for this we use update step on quest HUD widget 
and provide the description through the structure hours of our set member structure with, this, with the description here. So by description, HUD will know which widget it should update. And that's for the iteration. We have left two smaller one. It's simpler. Here we do basically the same, but we don't have here such elements as current amount and max amount. So by default, when we interact with something or we reach something, the default states of these steps are false. And when they received only one update, it means that the step should be completed. So we check whether object status and type are the proper one. If it's so, then we need to do also the same as we did here, but for another type of structure, for the proper one. So we use quest data steps reach reach index and set member in a reference and change complete status. Then we use it to update step in our hard widget and also increment step complete uh, complete step amount. So this here is the same but with a different type of structure here. So make sure that when you work with the reach type of steps, you change reach structure. If you work with interact, you change it the interact structure. So when we have done everything in compute steps, we can go here and check whether our complete steps amount equals our initial steps amount, this one. If it's so, it means that we have complete our quest and we make a interface call to actually fire this event and it will actually do, as I said it earlier, all the magic. Update widget, reset buffers, increase our index and receive and when it receive the new index it will fire the new quest from our data table so now the only thing we left is we have here the bindings or binding bindings I guess binding because bindings for our dispatches and we need to make calls from all elements that should actually fire these dispatches. So for this, let's open interactable base, consumable base, pickable base and checkpoint classes. To make your quest, to make, to make any entity be the quest item, you just need to add this type of operation on the event that should fire the logic. So, flexible base by default has main body. Each child that inherits from interactable base actually has its unique logic here. So, but in some cases, you don't need some fancy stuff to have in your child and simple interact call will be enough. But in case you want to have the, as I said, the child of the 
the child of the main operation under the quest system. So we have interact, iterate and reach. And each of this type of action can have some sort of their child, children. So, for instance, in main interactable class, under main body, you should add this type of operation. You should get player character, find the quest component, and for the interaction, you, knew you should call on quest item interacted, make sure that you set the proper call, not iterated, not on item reach, but on interacted. And use the proper type of action, interact. Because you want to have the same ability, for instance, in consumable base, you just need to here write the main body function, search for add call to button function. And when you do here and like this, the logic inside interactable base will trigger the first and consumable base will achieve the call of this event. But in case you don't want this, for instance, consumable base is for the iterated object. So right under the peak Python function, I just use the same kind of logic here, but with difference. I use iterate as the type and I make call on quest item iterated. For the pickable one, on grab and release, I have the same types. Because pickable base doesn't have any particular and fancy logic. And if you want just to grab or release it, you should use call on quest item interacted as we have here, but as the child type of the interaction, not the interact, but the grab here. And when we use release here, the same, but Type is release. So that's the logic I find myself very comfortable to work with. It's very expandable. And if I want to create some more types of operations that I can perform on the quest items, I just need to add more elements in the enumeration and make the operations under the parent class of each type of the interactable elements, interactable objects, because it's only base classes. So now all my pickables, right now I have grab crate or for instance consumables, it's three of them, cigarette consumable, food consumable, water consumable. When I do interaction with them, they all will be as the quest system items. And they will provide the proper information for the quest system. If I do need to work with some of them, everything will work properly. Also, as you saw from the preview, my fireplace is the straight child of the interactable base. Doesn't has doesn't have any particular logic, but event main body here I have the parent call to main body function. So in my case, when I need to interact with the fireplace, this logic works fine. I don't need to do something fancy because interactable base class by default has this call. That's pretty well works with such features like activate, deactivate and so on. And last 
what is left is our checkpoint. Here I've made some rearrangements to work with the editor stuff when I don't need to save it. And I don't need to have save system work with it. But it's not necessary here. Just look what I have here. When I overlap my checkpoint, I use this call. Call on checkpoint reached. Use type reach and that's all. And so when I overlap any of checkpoints, if the proper one is set to work with the quest system, it will fire it and quest system will work. Also, here is the fancy stuff about endpoint. Because the endpoint, in my case, is the element that allows me to continue to next level. So, when I interact with the endpoint, I check whether my quest component has go to next chapter true. If it's so, I save my progress and open next level. And guys, that's actually all for the quest system. I hope you like what you've seen, what you heard. I truly want to believe that some of you will follow my instructions and you'll apply and create the quest system on your own. Maybe it will suit your needs. I hope it will. So, everything you need to do now, just set prayer start, set quest data table, make arrangements so the save system will work, and in each particular element that should be in the quest system, base classes, you need to provide the proper calls for them. Well, the next episode will be about land mass plugin and the landscape auto material. So please leave your feedback, subscribe if you like what I do, and see you soon.